but I can't be a hypocrite. And we got to go to verse 26 of this passage. Actually, we could start at verse 25. To really understand in context what Jesus is speaking about. Because if we just pick out those two verses, we can use it to please our agenda. But we won't actually see the principle that Jesus is trying to teach. And I want to give you fair warning as I'm about to get into this passage. This piece will offend you. I, this is the part of the sermon that might cause you to not come back next week. But I'd rather be true to the context of the passage. I'd rather speak the truth and offend you than love you with lies tonight. And the, the truth will offend. But without offense, there cannot be change. So some of you might leave Christianity after today. But those of you who choose to stay will do powerful things for the kingdom of God. So Jesus has a multitude of people following him. Crowd is following him. And he turns to them. And this is really messed up, right? Because all of us think that Jesus is this, um, this loving, soft, gentle guy that only tells us, have peace and blessed are the poor and good things will come your way. But check out what Jesus says to this multitude, right? And I'm being quite honest with you. This for me is, as a pastor, as a leader, especially in 2023, this is the worst thing you can say to a group of people that are following you. Like if you have a large multitude of people, you have to say to them, hey, I love you, I'll give you money, I'll bless you, I'll heal you, anything you want, I will give it. You will have joy, you will have peace, everything is going to be well. We might even try to beg people, hey, come stay, do anything possible to please people so that they feel comfortable as we sugarcoat with the message of Jesus Christ. But Jesus confronts the entire crowd with some words here that will push anyone away. And it makes no sense if you're trying to get people to follow you. Why would you say some things that will actually offend them? And here's what Jesus says. If anyone comes to me but does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he what? Cannot. Cannot, right? Cannot be my disciple. And I know what you're thinking. Jesus really said that? Like, that's not the Jesus I know. The Jesus I've heard about is all about love and joy and peace and prosperity and faith and everything is going to work out and come to me and everything will be joyous. These are the words of Jesus himself. Whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. But verse 26 uses a very strong word here. It says, if one comes to me and does not hate, hate his father and mother, hate his wife, hate his children, hate his brothers, hate his sisters, hate his own life, he cannot follow me. And I read that word hate and I'm like, maybe Jesus meant something different. Maybe the original Greek was translated wrong into an English word that doesn't really get the essence of what Jesus was really trying to say. So I took the opportunity to actually get into the Greek just for you tonight. And this word hate that is used here is a Greek word messio. And I have good news, right? Here's what the word messio means. The word messio means... To hate, to pursue with hatred, to detest. If anyone comes to me but does not hate his mother and father. This word messio is the same word that is used in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. Where Jesus says, you cannot serve two masters. You will either messio hate one, and love the other. This word hate speaks about the call to actually be a disciple of Jesus. And tonight, as you are hearing this message, you've got to think, are you willing to pay the price to really follow Jesus? Growing up 
I grew up in a Muslim home, and at the age of five, my mom became a Christian. And she started attending church with myself and my younger sister. And I owe the majority of my spiritual development to my mother, who from a child took myself and my sister to church, even though her husband was a Muslim, did not agree with it, did not support it, did not drop her there or bring her back. She would carry myself and my sister to church every Sunday. She would carry us to extra events. She would get us involved in ministry, carry us to drama practice and the different ministry practices to make sure that we were serving God and to make sure that we grew in our relationship with God. And yes, it caused conflict. It does not make the marriage better because she chose Jesus over her husband. It didn't make it more peaceful and loving because she chose Jesus over her husband. There were many times that it, my, my father never understood and disagreed with what we were doing when it comes to choosing God and following God. There were only as night services where we entered into church into the new year as my mother my sister and myself and my dad was at home. My mother never stayed home to please him. We would pray together on a Monday night as a family while my dad would watch television. Four years ago, my dad received a vision of who Jesus is and he gave his heart to Christ and now he follows Jesus. He started following Jesus when I already became a pastor. When all those developmental years, those investments were already made by my mother. Anything you put above God is an idol. Unless you hate your mother and father, unless you hate your wife, unless you hate the poor little children, you cannot be a disciple of Jesus. And yes, in this context, Jesus is using the word hater as a hyperbole because he wants you to understand how important it is that you cannot put anything else above God. This is the cost of following Jesus. You might lose some family along the way. When my mom became a follower of Christ, her dad stopped talking to her. You might lose some people along the way. They will reject you. They will laugh at you. They will ill speak you. But if you live to please them, you will never please God. You got to start counting the cost. And if you're not willing to pay the price, you can't be a follower of Jesus. It's going to cost you your own life. Everything you want in this life, you got to lay it down beside your God and say, God, you are first. What you want, I will do. I want the money, but God, you are more important than the money. I want the success and the career, but God, you are more important than the success or the career. Because if you put anything above God, here's what. He will either remove the thing or he will leave you. Because God is not competing for first place in your life. So you choose. If you want to follow me, he had multitudes following him. Jesus, this is the worst thing you can say to get people to keep following you. If you want to follow me, you got to count the cost. This is what it means to follow Jesus. And as we move into next year, for those of you who serve at our church. I know our church is cool, it's fun, it's young, but you gotta count the cost of serving here. If you wanna serve here, you gotta count the cost of giving up Saturday nights because that's the night you're in church. You gotta count the cost of driving through some bad roads because we don't have control over that. You got to count the cost of sacrificing your time during the week because ministry is not done on a Saturday night. This is for the crowds. But the inner circle, we got to work during the week. If you want to serve here, you got to count the cost of giving up your finances. Because it's going to cost us financially. It's going to cost us some money for the vision of God to become a reality. 
When we were planting this church, my wife and I gave over $100,000 into this building project. That money was designated to start our home. We still live by my parents. We have a space that has been separated. That was the cost. When we started our expansion project, we were the first people to give $30,000 into our expansion project. Because the vision is to reach the current and future generations, to make a difference in the lives of our kids. And that's going to cost us something. It's going to cost us some money. It's going to cost us some time. And it's going to cost us some sacrifices. And if you call this church the place that you serve, and you aren't willing to pay the price for the vision of God to be fulfilled, then don't call here the place that God has called you to. Because it is going to cost you. So Jesus closes off this passage in Luke chapter 14 and verse 33. And he says, so likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. You've got to be willing to pick up your cross, to bear your cross. To pay the price and to press forward to serve Jesus. Because in this example, Jesus is, is helping uh, the crowd to make a decision that will determine whether they will say, I'm following Jesus, no turning back, or they will turn back in that moment. They're plagued with this decision. There's a large multitude following them. Am I willing to pay the price? Because here's what, if you pay the price, there is nothing on this earth. There is nothing that the devil can throw at you, tempt you with, attack you with, that will ever cause you to turn back. Because I already hate my mother. I already hate my father. I already hate my children. I already hate my own life. I'm willing to give up all of it. For Jesus. So what can the devil possibly do that will stop me from serving my God? If my kids are sick, I will still serve my God. If I am not well in my body, I will still serve my God. If I'm broke and I can't pay the bills, I won't get a next job, I will still serve my God. Because I'm willing to pay it all to bear my cross, follow Jesus, and say no turning back. I'm not going back to the person I used to be. I'm not serving the gods I used to serve. I'm not loving anyone else or anything else above Jesus. I'm pressing on towards the mark of the high calling. I've counted the cost. I see what it's going to take. I know the pain. I know the burden. And I've said yes to it all. I will lose my own life to just follow after Jesus. I will pay the price because he is my God. He is my king. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. Tonight, you want the vision of God to be fulfilled over your life? You want a family that is exemplary of the triune being of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? You want to raise your children in the Lord so that they aren't successful in this world, but they are influential? You want to be part of a movement of God that influences our culture, our community, our country? If you want to be part of it, i got to tell you, you've got to count the course. Am I willing to pay the price? But for those that are willing to pay the price, God will do powerful things through you. The crowd went down to 12. 11 after Judas betrayed him. The same crowds turned at him and chanted, Crucify him! And with those 11... The church was booted, grew and multiplied daily. The first message that Peter preached, 3,000 were added to the church. And today Christianity is over 2 billion in numbers. Why? 
The crowd wasn't willing to pay, pay the price. But 11 men were. They all besides John died for the gospel. Let me put it another way. They were murdered for preaching Jesus. My own life, I have to be willing to lay down. The cotton candy version of Christianity won't get us into the kingdom of God. It's just going to make us feel good for the week. And these 11 men were willing to pay that price with their own life. And their lives were given for the life that you enjoy today. Where you can hear this message of who Jesus is. It was on the blood that they shed that the gospel propelled out of the western, eastern hemisphere into all the areas of the world. They were willing to pay the price. You want to be a disciple of Jesus? You got to pick up your cross, follow Jesus, no turning back, and willing to pay the full price. The full price. Tonight I want to invite you to stand all around this house. Count the cost tonight.